Hi, welcome to our Bible study tonight. I'm Pastor Beth. And Pastor Greg, and we are doing tonight, we're talking about coming back after setbacks. This is part of our new series called Reboot, when you're starting over again in life. And there are times that we have that. Yes, and this year has really felt like one of them. That's why we've done sure. this. Uh, last week, you and Pastor Derek mm -hmm. talked about, you know, uh, pressing, pressing past grief. Yes, absolutely. You know. And recognizing that grief takes all sorts of forms um, and can show up in ways that catch you off guard, for right. sure. If you didn't get that one, and I haven't seen it yet, but I asked Pastor Derek and Pastor Beth to sh share that one. I felt that they had a lot to offer in that area. And if you haven't, I, I just, that was last week's, so that would have been July 1st. So uh, please go back and find that one, especially if it applies to you right now. If you've lost someone, this is a great time to tap into that kind of strength. And but there's some great scripture verses in there. Even if you don't think that that's something that's bothering you, mm -hmm. those scripture verses are fantastic. Are. And, and so just for that alone, I would encourage you to go look at that. And there's more than one kind of grief too. Absolutely, there's, there's for sure. More than one kind of grief. Um, today we're talking about overcoming setbacks and we're going to go to the setback king, oh, the comeback gosh. king. I don't know Absolutely. anybody that you could say has come back more um, than, than the life of Joseph. I think you could probably park on Joseph and spend the rest of your life preaching and studying and coming up with new things in his life for sure. There's, there's a few Old Testament characters and everybody knows that that's a particular favorite of mine in the mine. Old Testament characters for sure, but there's not too many people better than Joseph to just give you a plethora of things that, that the Bible can teach you for sure. He is a type of Christ, you know, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and when we say type of Christ, there are elements of Joseph's life that have immediate parallels uh, to the life of Jesus. We're going to go over some um, of these real quickly. Um, I'm going to go over a couple and, and let Pastor Beth take over. Uh, uh, he was Joseph was loved by his father, and just like the God the Father said, "This is my right. beloved son." Uh, Joseph's brothers didn't believe in him, and neither did Jesus. No. Uh, Joseph's brothers rejected his r right to rule, and the Jewish leaders say, "We won't have this man rule over us." Um, his brothers conspired against Joseph. There was a conspiracy to kill Jesus. Joseph was stripped of his garment. They stripped Jesus. And Joseph was sold as a slave for silver. And you'll remember wow. yeah, the they, parallel. Sure. I had never even thought about that one. Yeah, there's so many parallels. That's why we talk, uh, theologically, we talk about typology. God paints with a very small brush. There was one in there that was really exciting, and this Pastor Greg will appreciate this bit of nerdiness, and maybe some of you will as well. So I'm a big fan of the Answers in Genesis people. I really love creation science and, and the different groups around the country that study that. And there's some great series on right now on YouTube, and if that is your jam, I would definitely go Answers in Genesis. And they did a 24 part, 24 parts. I'm not even halfway done with it yet, but my point was, one of those series was talking about Joseph and taking the Bible truly, very literally, which we believe. And it talks about in, in the scripture about there being that famine in the land and that and all these years of reading the story and listening to the story, never once did that portion of that little verse sit and park with me how he how it the Bible very literally says people came from all over the earth and they talk about how this seven year famine was a global disaster the size of uh, the with the enormity of the flood and how it literally brought people from every single continent and how the things that were in Egypt went back to every single continent and how this famine allowed some of the ice age drain off from Noah's flood and and brought it was just the coolest thing and how and how Joseph was able to save the people all over the world just like Jesus did so not only was that a great connection that's a little bit of nerdiness for you if after this is over you'd like to go back to Your a different YouTube channel. science and history yeah. nerds. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, both of us. Really interesting though. 
Well, an, another thing that, that is a parallel is one criminal, when, when Joseph was in jail, one criminal was given life and the other one was condemned, just like right. the two thieves. So there's so many parallels. But let's talk, let's get to his life, because that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about overcoming setbacks in your life. So I want you to see the comeback king here, mm -hmm. uh, sure. Joseph. He starts out, it seems, on, on the face of it, it seems like he's kind of like the favorite, well, he absolutely is the favorite oh, son, yeah. which is its own set of problems, parents. Listen to me, if you have favorites, yep. stop it. Stop, stop it, it now. now. Yeah. You are helping nobody. You're not helping the one that's no, your favorite. Sure. You're n certainly not helping the one that uh, isn't. So you may have to treat them differently, but you better love them equally because that's, Word of God, okay? Joseph might have been the comeback king, but but Jacob, his father, was definitely the king of the dysfunctional family. Oh, seriously. Which is its own different This is a classic dysfunctional family. Yeah. Joseph had three stepmothers and th six stepbrothers <laughs> all living in the house at the same time. Joseph and his, is his father's favorite kid, and Jacob, his father, is unwise enough to openly display that his favoritism, and the result is that Joseph's brothers are jealous, and they grow to hate him. Now, his brothers scheme until given Given the opportunity, they devise a way to sell Joseph into slavery in Egypt and convince their father that he's been killed by wild animals. Now, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 37. We're not going to read the entire because there's too much scripture. We want to sure. focus on the parts that help you. But I want you to see this in Genesis chapter 37. I'll give you a moment to get there. <clears throat> These the thing that you have to understand about Joseph is that he has a real relationship with God oh, yeah. and that God talks to him. And folks, I'm going to tell you, you've heard me say this before, if you God hasn't talked to you in a while, if you have not heard the voice of God speak yeah. to your heart, it's because you're not listening or you're not listening the right way. Because God is speaking to his children. I, I, I remember the, when I first came um, to a certain church, and, I, and I, I, after a while, I'm like, are we a Pentecostal church? And they're like, like, why? Well, because it's gone a while, and we have not had a message. Yeah. And no, I, I'm not one of these people that you needed every week. No, and I can, that, you know, okay. Uh, but honestly, I can't imagine that in in week after week, month after month, that God doesn't yeah. have something to say to Absolutely. us that's direct. Obviously, God speaks to us from his word. But if he's not speaking to your heart, it's because you're not listening, mm. because he is speaking to your heart. And here's, he, he has the dream. Yeah. He has several dreams. And it has to do with his brothers bowing down to him. And, and you know, it's, it's symbolic. And, and he's confused about what all this is. And he's unwise enough to share, you know, uh, look at guys, he's got this coat of many colors, you know that, that section, right? Yeah. That coat of many colors was, uh, that meant the way they did that is they had to sew together strips mm. because you couldn't, you, they couldn't it print. It wasn't natural. No, and, they couldn't and, print and, right. like, like we can do on cloth. Right. Okay, so that was an expensive garment. And the reason you wear those things, you know, the reason ladies have long nails, the reason that the, the Padang women uh, are from, uh, is it Vietnam, where they have the big rings that make oh. the, the giraffe women? <laughs> that, that, that's to show status that you don't have to work for a living. Mm. That you that you you grow your nails I want long one of those because, coats. <laughs> because because you don't have to work. Right. Um, you 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 wear you wear a, a shirt and a tie because you don't have to grunt for a living. Right. Those things are symbolic, and he's and then he's put in charge to go look at. To check in and oversee his and brothers. his older brothers. Yes. Oh, which wow. Made it worse. You know, and his dad set him up for failure. Yeah. But Genesis 37, I've given you lots of time to get there. Go to verse 18. It says, But they saw him in a distance. Before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him in one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious wild animal devoured him, and then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So they've heard his dreams. He was unwise enough to share them. And, and you know, right there, that's a, good, that's a good point because I think somewhere in these studies, you really don't see in Joseph's life him sinning. No. Not the way you see Abraham 
or Moses or Noah or certainly David. Mm -hmm. You don't really see it. You see these moments and, and I think again as you spend your whole life listening to sermons and Sunday school lessons about Joseph, some people will pick up on that and turn him into this cocky, overbearing teenager. And and I don't He's think a kid. I don't think it has to be that because no. who else was he going to talk to? He was going to talk to the sheep or he was gonna to talk to his brothers about this crazy wild thing that had happened to him. Um, but one way or the other, you see that he is a victim of at least not knowing when to stop talking. When to stop talking or, sure. or to whom it's safe to talk to. Right. And I think that that's one of the things that, and, and this causes a major setback in mm -hmm. his life. And that you know what they do. Uh, finally, his he has one older brother, Reuben, that has a, an actual heart that says, okay, don't kill him. Seriously, don't kill him. He's your kid brother. Throw him in here, we'll sell him. And he, Reuben planned, to, it indicates that Reuben planned to get him before, right. but they sold him into slavery. So, wow, that is a setback. He goes from being a wealthy kid, favored of yeah. his, a, a, and ready to inherit a lot to being a slave in one day. And I will say another interesting thing too, if you ever have the opportunity to go through and, and do some study about the brothers of Joseph, is that out of all of those brothers, and was a very patriarchal top-down, eldest to youngest society, that it was, I think, four sons down before you have the son that eventually became in Judah, that became that kingly tribe because of the disaster that these brothers made in different places of, of Joseph's life and the consequences that they, Judah bounced back later on and had his own setback and got past that. But there was a reason why it took four brothers down before God could pick the kingly, king, uh, the kingly tribe out of the 12 of them, that, which I, and I that's, thought was really interesting That's too. the truth. So now you know, now, now would you skip to chapter 39, chapter 39, Genesis 39, and verse 1. Now Joseph, uh, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, the captain of the guard, bought him. So now he's, he's, he's traded. Just Can you imagine? I, I can't. You know, we talk Days about slavery, at the top of the world. slavery here in America. We, there's, sla there's, there's sex trafficking. I, I can't get used to this concept mm -hmm. that somebody could just own another human being and trade them like their chattel. It, yep. It's so repulsive. It's so awful. And But he actually lands in, as far as a slave goes, it's not too bad. Right. He finds favor. Verse 4 says, he found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. And Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. And now Joseph was well built and handsome, and you know the story. He's right. A, that he, doesn't really do him any favors later on. Oh being no. Well built and handsome for sure, and that is a, a difficult thing for him later on. Um, but also, I wonder how he looked back on these circumstances later on and really saw God's hand on his life as he went past his setbacks later on. To know it was Potiphar's house he landed in. He didn't land in someone else's house. He landed somewhere where he could use maybe skills he didn't even know he had. Yeah. He probably wasn't the one counting the beans back at Jacob's tent. No. That he really, this was all part of God's plan and I want you to remember that too. That wherever you are in the setback or get past your setbacks or overcome them cycle, that God really does have a purpose for every single place and single thing that you're doing and, and you should be encouraged by that. And so Potiphar, now he's got him in the house, and, and he says from the time, the Bible says, he picks up in verse 5, from the time he put him in charge of his household, all he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Joseph the slave, Joseph the foreigner, Joseph who very likely didn't speak Egyptian when this no, all happened. No, that started, yeah. And so, and now God is even blessing this we would have called him, they would have called him heathen man mm -hmm. who wasn't worshiping God mm -hmm. and who was owning this priceless child of God. And God is actually blessing him because of what Joseph was doing. And I think that's fantastic. It says the blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left it in Joseph's care. He didn't concern himself with anything except basically what he was going to eat for dinner that night. The Bible says, except the food he ate. That was Potiphar's biggest worry, what he was going to eat for dinner. That's fantastic. Because of Joseph, 
because Joseph was just true to to the spirit of God in him, no matter what his circumstances were. Starting over, yeah, I mean, think of how many start. Uh, 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 there, there's we we think of this as just one start over, but it is not one oh, start no. over because he is he goes from I think imagine the grief and the betrayal and the anger this young man ha has, and he never gives voice to it. He never, or no. at least in the scripture, he, no. we don't hear it. We hear it finally, and you don't tur don't turn to this, but we finally hear this in Genesis chapter 50 when when his brothers come oh, to him. Yeah, the then, end. then he is so overwhelmed with emotion that he 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 has a meltdown. He he makes a scene. Yes. And so we know he had these emotions. He is not made of stone, no. but he. It overcomes this setback of, of, of being betrayed by his family, of the loss of family, loss of everybody. He's not going to see his brother, he's not going to see his mom, his dad, and, 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 and maybe it's better that he didn't see his other brothers. Oh, but, yeah. but he, so he's torn apart here. Then he's traded like, you know, it's, he doesn't even get to stay with the people that took no. him. He, he, and who knows how many transactions happen before he lands at Potiphar. That's right. And you just don't know. You don't know. You don't see on the front end. And Joseph didn't see that on the front no. end. And I want to tell you just a, a brief story, one that I have told in different places before. And so you may have heard this, but there was a time and it was um, it was 11 years ago. I just remember by what grade my kids were in in school um, where I was at a, at a school with my kids were really little and three and five and I was working there and it had a daycare, it was the perfect situation. Everything was perfect. The commute wasn't so perfect, but in general, everything was perfect. And then the huge recession hit and one Christian school after another after another started to close down. And I came back from what would have been spring break to find um, things taken out of my office and, and everything kind of flipped around in my absence and I was called in and said at the end of the school year, my time there was terminated. And it was, it was, it I had never, that had never happened to me before. And it was, it was economical, but at the moment it didn't matter what the reason was for it. It was just horrific. And it wasn't just my place of work. It was my friends because my kids were little and because it was, it was a, a Christian environment. It was my, all my friends were there. It was such a huge commute. Like my whole life was wrapped up for the most part in that school, my, my friends, my job, my children's school, everything. And in a heartbeat, it, it was gone. And we had just started a Bible study at the church and it was my husband's idea. And I remember grousing about it, thinking I don't have time for one more thing. Why are you making me do this? And we had homework and I'm sitting there in my classroom uh, while the kids are taking some exam and I'm doing my homework. And I come across this verse from the middle of Jeremiah. And I will confess that up until that point, I didn't spend a lot of time reading through the book of Jeremiah <laughs> for general Bible study, devotional uplifting purposes. For, Pastor Derek just preached on it uh, uh, last Sunday, right? I know, but I hadn't, I hadn't quite gotten there yet. And this is what I read. It says, but blessed, so this is Jeremiah chapter 17, 7 and 8. And this particular verse is the one that was meaningful to me um, in general because of one word. Uh, so it says, but blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him, and I did not feel confident, by the way, at that moment, he will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, its leaves are always green. It has no worry in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. And when I remember, and I, I wrote it down, I've showed it to you, I think, even in, in Gimme Fives. I still have the card where I wrote it and the date on the back. But that word year, like I felt a physical like cold sweat come over me because I knew in that moment that I was not finding a job the next year. I, I could have told you, which doesn't mean I didn't look. I knew in my heart I was not that that year was in was the version I was reading for a reason. And I, I spent the next year homeschooling my kindergartner and managing a two and a half year old and longing for everything I had lost. And it was, in, in the grand scheme of things, it was very small, but it was really, it was huge. And I knew, like, I fought that year. And I was just thinking, Joseph would not have been proud of me. <laughs> I fought that year. Like, there were days I would sit on the curb watching my kids play down the end of the street during recess for homeschool time. 
thinking how alone I was and how miserable I was. I didn't have, there was, there was no smartphones then. It was the year I finally broke into Facebook and decided Facebook was something I needed just for other, and a year to the day, a year exactly to the day, God opened up the next phase of my life. And, and he, so many lessons I can look back at that year. And some of them I learned well, and some of them I would have gotten a C plus on if I was the teacher giving out grades for this. But I know I, that verse, I held on to that <coughs> verse, that God expected me not to wither and die, and that he had a purpose and a plan. And I want to encourage you with that. Make that verse your own or ask God for your own. But that was just really powerful for me. And that was, like I said, 11 years ago now, and it's still just a really meaningful thing. Sometimes we get to a situation, and um, I remember in one church that I, I was ready to leave this, and I called my district superintendent, and I'd been discouraged. I'd had a staff issue that just really, it, it could have split the church, but it didn't. Um, it, 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 it just was a mess. And there was nobody with clean hands in it, including me. Um, but it was just a mess. And it was going to get better, but I didn't know that. I, 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 I kind of went and I called my district superintendent and told him I was ready to leave. And, 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 the, you know, mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, is God calling you to leave? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I said that or not, but, but uh, like, that's, oh, what you felt. that's what I felt like. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. God isn't. I, I I may have been smart enough to say God isn't talking to me right now. You know, it's like something like that. And we, you felt that way, right? You need oh, to yeah. hear from people who love God and have a relationship with God and hear from God that we go through those times when we don't know if we're hearing from God and we don't and we do feel. Like and that, even when we're hearing from God that doesn't right, mean right, we want to hear like, from exactly God. exactly and so he said said to me and, and I want you to hear this because the wisdom of my district superintendent he says it sounds like you're ready to be a new pastor and there's two ways to do that you can go and be a new pastor somewhere else or perhaps you need to be a new pastor right where you are hmm. And, and one of the things, it, it, it was not, you know, when, when things happen, it's not just one thing. It's the straws that break the camel's back, right? right. It's not, if you, have, if you lose a loved one and, and then you lose a job or things change and all of a sudden you're coping with this sciatica that goes down right. your, your or, or back pain or suddenly they're telling you you know what you need an infusion every you, you, you've got this infection you need this infusion you know you know the, the dif right. different health things that you might face you know and all of a sudden and it's the the, the drip and it's like okay and with with me I, you know I was so close to John and Sue Mm, I yeah. love John. They yeah. moved away. I was so close with Roy and Thelma, and they and they moved away. Yeah. And we and we had these, and we'd had the, the the kind of mess up with the staff, and it's like, and the church was doing well, honestly. You know, mm. the church had grown, and we had we had some people go to that uh, that others, and we replaced them in a matter of months. But I was feeling beat, you know. And God spoke to me through my district superintendent and said begin again, mm. begin again. Um, Lynn and I, when we were first married, um, we lost, we had a setback <laughs> right away. Um, I lost my job, the, the, um, the machine sh shop that I was working in shut down mm. right, a week before Christmas. Oh, jeez. And Lynn was working in a retail store, and uh, just, you know, just temporary right. and, and, and doing freelance art on the side, and she lost her job right after New Year's. So we wow. begin our newlywed, and we're married from September. You know, it's like, oh yay, this is great. And you know what? God spoke to us, and just, just I remember being uh, at my brother and sister-in-law's church. They had us come and play music for mm. um, for their New Year's, and we're both laid off. We both know, know right. we're both laid off, and so we're ministering and we've got a couple of songs that we're doing we're not the speakers and just I just shared our situation and at the moment I shared God brought faith that this mm. that the way things 
are are not the way things are always going to be. Yeah. Um, take us to this this scripture. This is a great scripture. So these are, even if nothing else is spoken to you, and, and I, I really, I don't believe that would be the case right now, but if We're nothing put this scripture else up for you. had spoken to you, these verses from Psalms in particular, Psalm 37, 23, and 24, and these are the kind of verses I would say, read them, listen to them in every version you can get your hand on to, to get every last morsel out of it and every little nuance out of it. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I mean, did you get that? That even if you fall down, you're not going to be down forever and God is going to pick you up and uphold you with his hand. The God of all creation just told you he's going to make sure you don't stay down and he's going to reach out with his own hand. That's huge. And, and here's and something I want to tell you about Joseph and I want to tell you about me and I want to tell you about Beth. You might say, well, that's your situation. You guys are, have talent. You have education. You have, have this and Joseph was talented and he had the background. Poppycock, okay? That's a theological term. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Look what the scripture says. Yeah. It says, though he fall, he shall not be uh, utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. It's the Lord. Talent is cheap. There's so many talented people in the world. Honestly, seriously, there are so many talented people. And most people. of them are not doing anything for the kingdom uh, uh, of God. Seriously, there's for so sure. much talent. And it's all about connections. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. And that happens. How does that happen? Well, in the world, they call it networking, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's how they do it. They put themselves out. But if you're in the kingdom of God, God will help you make those connections. And what better way if he's holding your hand? Mm -hmm. And then that last verse, that Romans 8, 28, and one that is super familiar to everyone. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So by the way, that's you, because mm -hmm. he loves you and he's called you and he's working for your good. And you can piggyback and jump on those verses and go to all the other verses that say, he has good plans for you, plans for your betterment, not for your detriment, to give you hope and a future and go on and on and on and take God at his word that you can come back from it. But I think that this last quote here, this is God controls our circumstances and we control our responses. Look back to Joseph. Think about where you are in the world, whether it's a little sit setback or a big one. Right now, it could be your job that you've lost. This is people are continuing, even as maybe the world is opening up a little bit, jobs are still being lost or positions or things are not going right. So whatever your circumstances are, you can control your responses to those and look back through these verses and these chapters about Joseph and, and look for yourself in Joseph and places where you can react and not react the way he is. We're going to come back at another time. We're going to come back to the life of Joseph, but I want to I want to speak to you right where you are right now. Just Pastor Beth just shared a couple of circumstances that might be yours, that that they might be setbacks that you've had financial or job setbacks. Some of the setbacks are the loss of relationship, the loss of someone you love, but sometimes more devastating than that. There's the loss of relationship, and they're still alive. And it's mm -hmm. absolutely ripping your heart out, the break in the relationship. I want to draw you back to Joseph's beginnings. If ever there was a dysfunctional family, this is it. Oh, yeah. If ever there was betrayal, this is it. If ever there was murderous intent and, and so forth, it's in this family. Who would ever think that it would bring salvation to not just the nation of Israel, but the nation of Egypt and other nations. The whole and world, the, whole the Bible world. says. He and, saved the whole world. And his family relationships were restored. I'm telling you, that's the God you serve. Yes. You don't know it now. You don't know the end of your story. Yeah, but God sure. does. Amen. You can't control your circumstances, but you can control your responses. That's right. We encourage you. Look to God. Amen. Amen. Will you pray for us? I will.
God, we thank you that you, and you tell us that every bit of your word is for our instruction and for um, us just to learn from God. And there's so much in the life of Joseph. And so I pray that uh, the folks listening and watching will open up the, the book of Genesis and just keep reading it and keep listening and keep trying to picture these circumstances, Lord, and, and to see how you move through Joseph and then inspire them, inspire us to, to use us in amazing ways that we can't even think about. And I thank you, you, you used Joseph, you didn't wait until he was pulled out of the muck and the problems, mm -hmm. you used him in the jail, you used him as a slave, you used him in every single terrible circumstance, and you never let him go, and you pulled him up with your hand, and I thank you that you promised that you will pull us up with your hand as well. And so I pray your blessings on the folks watching this, Lord. Meet their every needs, Father, Amen. and show them that you have yes, these Lord. amazing things for them to do, Lord, that they couldn't have even fathomed, just like Joseph couldn't even fathom what his life was really gonna be like as he got pulled out of that pit by those Midianite slave traders. He had no idea what you were gonna do with his life. And we might not either, God, but we trust you, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next week or see you Saturday and Sunday at 10.30. Right. right. Make sure you hit the subscribe bell and all those cool and funky things so that you know when we're doing new Bible studies each week and you don't miss the, the kids puppet shows that come up on Sunday and all the services. Hey, some Bring of that you bill been, and subscribe. Some of you have been sharing these That's on cool. Facebook and, yeah. and with other folks. And so uh, we're getting some watch. We're getting some watches from folks from around the country and even overseas. So that's kind of cool. Goldie is spanning the globe. <laughs> Have a good night. God bless you.